Okay, he uh, is now the in charge of the uh, management of the acceptance of the waste uh, package from the nuclear power plant and working at the uh, Lokash Low Level Radioactive Waste Disposal Center of JNFL. Please, uh, uh Thank you for introducing me, uh, Mr. Kishida-san. And good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mamoru Kumagai. Uh, working at the local show, uh, low level radioactive waste, this was the center of Japan uh, Nuclear Fuel Limited. Recently, I've been in charge of management and acceptance of low level waste packages from nuclear power plants, including uh, the audit of waste uh, quality and the application for waste disorder uh, to a uh, regulatory body. Today, I'm going to make a presentation of this title. Our train of radioactive waste disposal in Japan, our main in progress of waste disposal project, and finally, I will show you a short movie on our, our facility, disposal facility. I hope uh, this presentation will uh, help your country to establish an uh, effective implementing system on nuclear energy utilization or radioactive waste uh, management. This is the contents of this uh, presentation. Uh, first three, I will introduce uh, the outline of radioactive waste, uh, including the definition of radioactive waste, uh, radioactive waste from nuclear facilities, and the classification. Second, I'm going to talk about uh, radioactive waste disposal in Japan, mainly on geological disposal of high-level waste uh, promoted by NUMO and on concrete pits disposal of low-level waste uh, in JNFL, local site disposal, uh, disposal center. Uh, finally, I will summarize on, in one slide of this presentation. I hear the contents of the first part, including these three topics. Uh, here's a definition of radioactive waste uh, written in IAEA safety glossary. Uh, there are two uh, definitions. The first one is uh, used for legal and uh, regulatory purposes. Radioactive waste is the waste that contains or is contaminated with uh, radionuclides at activity concentrations uh, greater than uh, clearance levels as established uh, by the regulatory body. Uh, clearance level means a kind of uh, borderline uh, between radioactive waste or, uh, and not. Uh, the other is uh, referred from the Joint Convention on the Safety of Spent Fuel Management and on the Safety of Radioactive Waste Management. Radioactive waste uh, is a radioactive material uh, for which uh, no further use is foreseen by the contracting party uh, or by a natural legal person and which is controlled as radioactive waste by a regulatory body. And this slide shows radioactive waste from nuclear power plants. Uh, on, this, on this website, on this website, uh, you can access and download uh, some useful uh, English uh, information on nuclear energy uh, related, related topics. And there are uh, three uh, waste forms, gaseous, liquid, and solid. Gaseous waste is released into the air from exhaust uh, stacks in nuclear power plants. Before the release, uh, radic gas is stored in tank or gas holdup system for decay. And then the gas is filtered and the radioactivity uh, concentration of the gas is measured uh, for safety check. And most of liquid waste is reused at nuclear power plants or release to the ocean. Of course, the radioactivity concentration of the liquid waste is measured uh, before uh, the release to the ocean. A part of liquid waste is uh, concentrated by evaporation system and is solidified into drum packages, like this. The drum packages are disposed of in low-level waste uh, disposal facility in JNFL local site. And the solid waste includes uh, many kinds of waste, uh, such as the paper, uh, clothes, filters, 
spent resin, and the metals. The radioactivity concentration level of solid waste is very broad. Very low level waste is reduced as resources uh, disposed of as normal industry waste or radioactive waste. A part of solid waste has relatively high radioactivity and concentration, such as control rods of fuel assembly, reactor structure of nuclear power plants. This kind of waste is stored on site and will be disposed of in an intermediate uh, level depth disposal facility. And this slide showed the uh, flow uh, on high level vitrified gas waste, uh, grass waste arising from reprocessing plant. Spent nuclear fuel from nuclear power plants contains a massive amount of radioactivity. However, it also includes uh, recyclable uh, uranium and plutonium, approximately 95%. In order to recycle uh, the resources, uh, the processing plant is needed and has been constructed uh, in JNFL local site. Uh, through the reprocessing, high-level radioactive liquid waste is arising. The liquid waste, uh, the, this liquid waste is mixed with raw grass materials and melted at high temperature. And then molten grass uh, is contained into stainless, uh, stainless steel canisters. This waste form, uh, this waste form is called as vitrified, uh, vitrified grass or high level electric waste. The size and weight of the vitrified waste is, uh, is here. In Japan, spent fuel is considered as uh, resources. However, some countries like Sweden or Finland consider it as waste. They intended to dispose of spent fuel directly and the classified spent fuel into high level waste. Although, although the annual amount of general waste and industrial waste is approximately 3.4 tons per capita in Japan, radioactive waste is approximately uh, 131 grams, and high level waste is approximately uh, 4 grams. This figure is a conceptual illustration of the waste uh, classification scheme. Uh, provided by IEA's uh, general, general Safety Guide in 2009. The guide defines six categories of radioactive waste in terms of half-life and uh, radioactivity content. The first one is exempt waste, uh, EW. Exempt waste is the one that meets the criteria uh, for clearance, exemption, or exclusion uh, from regulatory control uh, for radiation protection. The second is uh, very short-lived uh, VSLW. VSLW is the one that can be stored for decay over a limited period of up to a few years uh, and subsequently uh, created from regulatory control. This class includes uh, waste containing primarily uh, lead nucleotides with very short half-lives often used for research and medical purposes. The third is very low level waste. VLW is the one uh, that does not necessarily meet the criteria of uh, exempt waste, but that, that uh, does not need a high level of containment and isolation. And therefore, it is suitable for disposal in near surface uh, landfill type uh, facilities with limited regulatory control. The next one is low-level waste. LLW is the one that is above clearance levels, but with limited amounts of long-lived uh, lead nucleotides. Such waste uh, requires robust isolation and containment uh, for periods of up to a few hundred years. It is suitable for this water uh, in engineered near-surface facilities. And then uh, intermediate-level uh, waste, ILW is the one that, because of its, co its content, particularly of long-lived radionuclides, requires a greater uh, degree of containment, containment and isolation than that uh, provided by near-surface disposal. Therefore, waste in this, class, uh, in this class requires disposal at greater depths of the order of tens of meters uh, to a few hundred meters. Finally, high-level waste 
HLW is the one that, uh, with levels of activity concentration, high enough to generate uh, significant, significant quantities of heat uh, by the radioactivity K process. Disposal option for such waste is to isolate in deep, stable uh, geological formations, usually several hundreds meters or more below the surface. Uh, there are some borderlines uh, be, uh, between the, the categories. Uh, however, they are a little uh, ambiguous. Next is the second part, part uh, radioactive waste disposal in Japan. This part includes four topics, waste categories and the disposal concept, uh, nuclear fuel cycle, high-level waste disposal, and low or intermediate-level waste disposal in Japan. This slide shows the classification of radioactive waste in Japan. In our nation, radioactive waste from nuclear power plants and other nuclear facilities are classified into uh, low-level waste and high-level waste. Low-level waste are from nuclear power plants uh, are subdivided into uh, three, like this figure. In descending order of radioactivity concentration, we sometimes uh, call these waste uh, L1, L2, L3 waste. In our domestic regulations, uh, we will be uh, uh, in our domestic regulations, these waste types are called as category two waste. Uh, generically, a part of the lot of waste will be disposed of in geological disposal facility due to higher radioactivity concentration of long labeled radionuclide, like this. Such waste comes from the processing plant and is called as TRU waste. TRU means transuranium. Uh, JNFL has been receiving and disposed of L2 waste in the Lokashi Low Level Waste Disposal Center and uh, the Japan Atomic Power Company applied for business approval for disposal of L3 waste in 2015 and has been under safety examination by regulatory body and the Federation of Electric Power Companies and the related organization have been carrying out uh, the feasibility study on disposability of L1 waste. In Japan, High-level waste means a vitrified waste uh, form the uh, from the reprocessing plant. This high-level waste and the TRE waste are called as category one uh, waste generically. And this slide shows the disposal concept for each type waste type. Uh, blue takes are waste type and red takes are disposal concept. In increasing order of disposal depths, uh, near surface disposal, uh, mm, near surface disposal, intermediate depth disposal, and uh, geological disposal. Uh, the key values of disposal depths, depths are 70 and 300 meters. And the target of waste for uh, intermediate depth disposal is the L1 waste. The site for this kind of uh, disposal facility has not been decided. An implementing body uh, of the geological disposal in Japan is NUMO, Nuclear Waste Management Organization of Japan. The depth of the uh, facility will be uh, 300 meters or more. And the site for geological disposal has not been decided. However, uh, two local municipalities in Hokkaido have applied uh, for the first step investigation for site selection in 2020. I'm going to refer this uh, topic. Next topic is the nuclear fuel cycle. This slide shows the concept of the nuclear fuel cycle, the series of activities associated with nuclear power uh, generation. Natural uranium for use in a nuclear reactor goes through the steps, mining, and the refining, and the conversion, and enlistment, and the fuel fabrication. These steps are called the front end of the nuclear fuel cycle. After uranium uh, has been used in a reactor as a fuel, the spent fuel may undergo further steps, including 
the processing before uh, waste are uh, disposed. These steps are known as the back end of the nuclear fuel cycle. Japan is a nation with limited natural resources, so it is an important energy strategy for our future to ensure stable energy and security and to realize economic efficiency on the premise of safety as well as to pursue uh, environment suitability. Facilities on pink ovals uh, own, are owned by our company, GNFL. There are five facilities, a uranium enrichment plant, reprocessing plant, vitrified waste storage center, and MOX fuel fabrication plant, and the low-level uh, radioactive waste disposal center. This slide shows the location of our company, JNFL. Uh, this is the mainland of Japan, Honshu. And uh, the northernmost part is Amur Prefecture. And this part uh, facing um, Pacific Ocean here yeah. uh, is um, Lokasho village. And our company is here, Lokasho. The center of this, uh, this map is uh, Obuchi Marsh. Uh, Black Shrek, and the, in the northern part of this marsh, there are uh, low level radioactive waste disposal center and uranium enrichment plant. Low level radioactive waste disposal center has been in operation. In 2021, uh, we got approval for the amendment of business permission uh, to establish a new uh, disposal facility and to extend the capacity of the center, and has been constructing uh, the new uh, disposal facility. Operation of uranium enrichment plant has suspended since uh, 2017 because of safety improvement construction. In the west part of this marsh, there are uh, reprocessing plant, electrified waste storage center, and mox fuel plant. We'd like uh, the reprocessing plant to be in operation in the first half of the fiscal year, 2024. The vitrified uh, waste storage center has been in operation and the MOX fuel fabrication plant has been under construction. And here is our triangle of business uh, of JNFL. In this table, capacity means the one approved by a regulatory body, the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Some facilities have been under conformity check for the uh, regulation established after Fukushima Daiichi a nuclear accident. Uh, please allow me to skip uh, the explanation in detail uh, through the processing plant to MOX fuel fabrication plant. Low level waste uh, disposal center has received approximately uh, 350,000 waste packages for 30 years. I will mention this facility in more detail. This slide shows a few diag flow diagram of the processing in Lokasho. In this floor, raw material is spent fuel and the final, uh, final products are uranium oxide and the uranium plutonium mixed oxide. That is MOX. And then uh, yellow circles uh, mean uh, uranium, uh, but ones, uh, blue ones are plutonium, uh, green ones are fission products. Uh, through reprocessing, uh, some kind of waste uh, with high lead activity are uh, arising, such as metal chips during uh, chopping or dissolving process, and the liquid waste containing fission products uh, during separation process. The Nokasho reprocessing plant is the first commercial reprocessing plant in Japan. In this plant, the Purex process, Purex means plutonium, uh, uranium, reduction extraction process was introduced uh, the Purex process has proved high performance in Japan and abroad. To reduce uh, the proliferation risk, the Lokasho reprocessing plant adapted the plutonium uranium co extraction technology that combines recovered uranium uh, with separated plutonium before the nitration process. Plutonium is recovered at, MOX, the, at the end of the process so as to never to be recovered as high purity uh, plutonium oxide. The maximum capacity of the plant is 800 tons uranium per year, enough to reprocess, uh, reprocess uh, spent fuel produced from about 40 reactors at 
uh, 1,000 megawatt class nuclear power plants. And uh, next is high level waste disposal. Here is the basic policy and the current situation of high level waste management in Japan. Basically, uh, the government of Japan has been promoting comprehensive measures for spent nuclear fuel, not to delay the burden on future generations. And the government has been standing in front and working on the final disposal of high level waste and continuing uh, to gain public or local understanding. In this point, the government has published the nationwide map of scientific features for site selection uh, of the geological disposal facility in 2017. After that, two local municipalities in Hokkaido applied for the literature survey for the final disposal of high-level waste in 2020. Then, the government and the NUMO launched the surveys in November uh, 2020. The government needed to commence surveys in as many, as, as many areas as possible nationwide, so it has been continuing dialogue activities with local municipalities and the public. Current situation of high-level waste management is here. And that ma the term management includes not only the fi final disposal, but also preconditioning and interim storage uh, before the final disposal. And Japan's uh, electric power companies have entrusted uh, France and the United Kingdom with the reprocessing of a part of the spent fuel. And then uh, vitrified waste uh, returned from overseas is stored, stored in the vitrified uh, waste storage center of JNFL for cooling until uh, the final disposal. Numo, the implementing entity of high-level waste disposal, will have to conduct three-step investigations for the site selection around 20 years without bringing radioactive waste into candidate site. This slide shows the storage facility for vitrified waste uh, in Lokasho. The lower left photo is the inside of the vitrified waste storage center. Orange ones are timber tube seal for vitrified waste. The center figure shows a section view uh, of a uh, storage pit. In this area, atmospheric pressure is kept lower than that outside the building, so that radioactivity will not escape even in case of emergency. Each simple tube in the storage pit contains uh, nine canisters, which are stored for 30 to 50 years for cooling. Uh, cooling air passes uh, outside the simple tube uh, and it has no direct contact with vitrified waste. In this area, uh, concrete and iron are used as the main radiation shielding materials for blowers and walls. As of the end of uh, March 2023, 1,830 uh, canisters are stored in Lokasho Storage Center. The center has been under safety improvement, uh, construction, and plans to resume operation of high-level waste reception after the uh, confirmation by the Nuclear Regulation Authority of Japan, NRA. And this slide shows the multivariate system of zero-zero disposal in Japan. That system is composed of uh, engineered barriers and uh, natural barriers. The engineered barriers include vitrified waste, overpack, and buffer material. In this system, the vitrified waste has a rule to contain radionuclide in itself for a long time. Overpack is made of steel and has a rule to prevent groundwater intrusion uh, into vitrified waste. In deep underground environment, there is little dissolved oxygen in surrounding groundwater, so corrosion rate or dissolution rate of the overpack will be kept in very low level. A candidate of um, buffer material is compacted bentonite. Such material has a very low water permeability. It can also absorb radionuclide on its particles and retard mi the migration of radionuclides through itself. Surrounding bedrock is natural barrier. 
as well as the buffer material, it can absorb radionuclides uh, and retard the migration of them. This figure uh, illustrates a vertical emplacement of high-level waste. However, some countries considered to adopt uh, horizontal, horizontal uh, emplacement. This figure shows the process for disposal site selection of high-level waste. The selection of the disposal site uh, will be undertaken via a three-step process based on the legislation called as a Final Disposal Act. The site se uh, selection procedure specified in the Final uh, Disposal Act consists of three, step, uh, three steps, namely literature survey, and the preliminary investigations and the detailed investigations. Uh, Numo will compare reports on the investigation results at each stage of the process and will hold explanatory meetings. At these meetings, local people can express their opinions on this matter, and then such opinions uh, will be made known to the relevant prefectures and uh, municipalities together with Numo's view. And the selection will proceed on the basis of uh, respecting local opinions, obtaining a stakeholder agreement, and securing the, of the uh, uh, government approval. The government has stipulated that uh, when approving each stage of the site selection process, the opinions of the municipality mayors and the governors of the prefectures uh, concerned uh, must be listened uh, to and respected. Uh, following the selection of a repository construction site, the disposal facilities uh, will be designed and uh, a safety evaluation will be undertaken. Construction uh, will only begin after safety debut uh, by government expert. Next, uh, nationwide map of scientific feature for geological disposal. Uh, the left hand side uh, figure uh, is a nationwide map of scientific features for zero cut disposal, published on the website of the, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and the Industry in 2017. And you can see four colored areas in the Japanese archipelago. Orange and silver uh, areas are unfavorable because they are volcanoes, uh, forts, or natural resources near the areas. Light green and uh, green area are favorable. The green areas facing coastline are more favorable in terms of transport cost. The favorable areas account for 65% of our country. Uh, since the publication of the map, NUMO has been promoting nationwide uh, dialogue activities in local areas eagerly. In October 2020, two local municipalities in Hokkaido, Sutsu Town, and Kamoenai Village uh, have applied for the literature surveys uh, process. After that, NUMO established local community centers in these municipalities in March 2021. Next topic is uh, progress of low and intermediate level waste disposal project in Japan. Uh, this table shows the outline of the progress. As I mentioned above, waste classification of low, low or intermediate level waste includes three types, L3, L2, L1 waste in ascending order of radioactivity concentration. L3 waste is planned to be disposed of in a uh, trench disposal facility. In 2015, the Japan Atomic Power uh, Company applied for business permission on establishment of a repository uh, to dispose of VLW, arising from decommissioning of Tokai nuclear power plant. Since then, uh, Nuclear Regulation Authority of Japan has been conducting safety uh, examination on design and the performance of the repository uh, and the conformity check with uh, regulatory requirements L2 waste it has been disposed of in our facility, a local low-level radioactive waste disposal center since uh, 1992. In 2021, uh, we, JNFL, got approval for the amendment of business permission 
including the establishment of a new disposal facility. That is the number three disposal facility and the construction now. I will mention more detailed information on this topic later. Next is L1 waste. L1 waste is considered to be disposed of in an intermediate depth disposal facility uh, related to the, uh, this waste. Japan, Japan's regulatory body, the Nuclear Regulation Authority, has created almost uh, regulatory requirements on intermediate depth disposal. On the contrary, uh, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and the Industry and the utilities have been promoting uh, research and development activities, including full-scale tests on repository establishment, waste characterization, and so on. This slide shows the JAPC Trends Disposal Project on L3 Waste. In the JAPC's plan, they are going to locate a uh, trench disposal area in the site of Tokai Nuclear Power Plant. A light hand side uh, figure illustrates an image of a trench disposal facility. The disposal facility is to be established above uh, this groundwater level in order to avoid contacting groundwater into L3 waste directly. Before this application submitted, L3 waste from decommissioning of a research reactor had been disposed of in another trench disposal site. The disposal site uh, has been already closed and covered with soil. And this slide shows the location of our disposal center. That is Rokkasho Low Level Radioactive Waste Disposal Center. The lower light, uh, light figure is the site map. On the side, there are operating disposal area, including number one and number two disposal facility, and administration building and the low-level waste temporary storage and the inspection building. In this low-level waste temporary storage and the inspection building, received waste packages uh, and ch are checked for the final disposal, such as ident identification numbers, degree of deformation of waste packages. After the inspection of this building, in this building, waste packages are transported to the disposal area by on-site vehicles and impressed into concrete pit facilities of the area by cranes. Your any management plant is connected uh, to the administration building. This slide shows the amendment of JNFR's business permission on low-level waste in Rokkasho. So far, we have been disposing of homogeneously uh, solidified waste in number one disposal facility. Here, uh, homogeneously solidified waste is a waste package that includes condensed liquid waste, uh, liquid radioactive waste, and solidification materials, such as cement, uh, bitumen, and plastic. However, recently received amount of this type of waste is significantly uh, declined, approximately 1,000 packages, packages a year. On the contrary, uh, we have been disposing of dry active waste in number two disposal facility. Dry active waste includes solid waste like metal and plastics. This waste has been arising from nuclear power plants uh, continuously, even if uh, the plants are in non-operation. And then capacity of number two disposal facility has been less affordable against the amount of waste production. Therefore, we applied uh, for the amendment of our business permission in August 2018, and then got approval on it in July 2021. The approval includes the establishment of a new number three disposal facility for dry active waste, and the amendment of number one disposal facility operation, so as to dispose of dry active waste. The, the lower left uh, side of figure shows the location of number three uh, disposal area. The lower right side of figure illustrates the uh, section of number three uh, disposal area. Cover soil is composed of three layers. The inner layer is called as low permeable cover soil, which will be made of bentonite sand mixture. This slide shows the outline of number one disposal to number three disposal facilities with focusing structure of concrete pit. Each disposal facility uh, can dispose of about 
200,000 waste packages, the number of concrete pits of number one, number two, and number three depot facilities are 40, uh, 16, and eight, respectively. The size of the pit and the unit capacity of the pit has been enlarged progressively. And these blue uh, parts are inspection tunnel and or pipe. These parts will be established before closure uh, with cover soil in order to check radioactivity concentration in drainage uh, from concrete pits. The next is intermediate depth disposal facility for iron waste. This slide shows the concept and the features of the intermediate depth disposal facility. This figure is an image of the facility. The lower figures are section of uh, disposal cavern. Uh, green squares mean uh, waste packages that is composed of steel containers and iron waste. Engineered barriers uh, may include concrete pits, mortar layer with low diffusivity, and compacted bentonite with low permeability. Iron waste is to be disposed of in area with a sufficient depth, barrel, generic underground utilization, such as construction of residence, high-rise building, uh, subway, uh, water, uh, and sewage services. This kind of disposal facility uh, needs high performance engineered and natural barriers in order to retard the migration of radionuclides from waste packeted for a long time. For safety securement on this disposal concept, the Nuclear Regulation Authority has created almost uh, safety regulations, including uh, requirement on licensing. Finally, uh, let me summarize today's presentation. I have talked about these two parts. The first part was outline uh, of radic waste, and uh, the second part was uh, radic waste in disposal in Japan. Uh, skip, uh, please uh, let me skip. And finally, I will show you our short movie, about eight minutes. Sorry, please start. The operation, inspection and other phases of the work at nuclear power plants generates liquid waste, spent resin, metal, plastic and other types of waste with low levels of radioactivity. The waste packages destined for burial at the number one disposal area include the concentrated liquid waste, spent resin, incinerated ash and other materials generated during nuclear power plant operation. This waste is solidified in drums together with cement, asphalt or plastic. The packages to be buried at the number two disposal area are sorted into metal, plastic, insulating materials, filters and other solid waste. As needed, they are then cut up, compressed, melted down or otherwise processed, packed into drums and solidified with cement-based filler. These waste packages are temporarily stored and managed in warehouses inside the nuclear power plant sites. There, each waste package is carefully checked by inspectors of Japan Nuclear Fuel Limited. A variety of inspections are conducted, including checks of external appearance, measurements of surface contamination density, radioactivity concentration, package weight, axial compression strength and other parameters. Waste packages complying with the inspections are labelled with serial numbers and then packed into customised transport containers in groups of eight drums. These transport containers are measured for radiation dose equivalent rates and then transported by cargo ship to Rokasho.
A cargo ship carrying low-level radioactive waste arrives at Mutsu Agawa port in Aomori. The transport containers are hoisted up by a crane, two at a time, and placed on trucks. After this, a gate monitor is used to measure the radiation level, confirming that the containers are safe for transport. The containers are then hauled over an exclusive route to the low-level radioactive waste temporary storage and inspection building. The waste packages are brought to the temporary storage and inspection building. Each waste package is carefully removed from its transport container and carried to the inspection device. The packages are placed on an inspection table with cameras mounted above, on the side and beneath the table used to confirm external appearance, markings, serial numbers and other details. Here in the area next to the control room, the final confirmation tests are performed by representatives of a government designated agency. The waste packages passing these government inspections are turned on their sides with a special tipping device and then forwarded to the waste delivery facility. Next, the waste packages are hoisted up by ceiling crane in groups of eight and loaded onto transport trucks inside the building for transfer to the disposal area. All inspection procedures are automated through computerized control. The waste packages transported to the disposal area are automatically placed in their correct positions by a burial crane. The waste packages are stacked in a firm and neat fashion. For each cell compartment of the concrete pit in the number one disposal area, waste packages are stacked in eight levels, five columns across and eight drums deep. Each cell, therefore, will hold 320 drums. The cells of the concrete pit in the number two disposal area will stack waste packages nine levels high, five columns across and eight drums deep, holding 360 drums in total. A cement-based mortar backfill is poured into the spaces between the stacked waste packages, closing off all openings and totally sealing in the radioactive materials. After this, the pit is covered with a reinforced concrete lid, creating a monolithic rock-like structure. Now, Let's talk about the cover soil and the subsequent monitoring of the storage conditions. First, an inspection tunnel will be built to monitor and inspect the water drainage. After that, the entire pit will be covered with a bentonite sand mixture, which is extremely difficult for water to permeate. A layer of cover soil will also be added, with grass planted on top of that. This disposal area is designed for multiple layer protection. The structure is comprised of an engineered barrier, the cement-based backfill with the waste packages at the core, a porous concrete layer with a drainage function, and a reinforced concrete wall. There is also a natural barrier, formed from the bentonite sand mixture, the bedrock and the cover soil. The disposal concrete pits are constructed in the excavated solid bedrock, which is characterized by extremely low groundwater movement. The areas around the pits are compacted with the bentonite sand mixture, which is even less water permeable than the bedrock. In this way, every possible step is taken to prevent water from seeping into the disposal concrete pit. Thank you.
Thanks to the porous concrete layer, which contains tiny pores easy for water to pass through, such seepage will be drained away before it can ever reach the waste packages. At the low-level radioactive waste disposal centre, institutional control over buried waste will continue over the next three centuries. During this period, the radioactivity of the waste will eventually decay to safe levels. Sorry, this video, uh, contents of video are a little old, so... Uh, 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 our uh, latest amendment of business approval uh, is copper solids, three layers, but this is two layers. Okay, uh, changed. Sorry. That's all. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, informative presentation on the radioactive waste management disposal. Any, uh, are there any questions for Kumangai san? Thank you. Uh, so you said that uh, two uh, communities actually reached out and volunteered for the uh, initial surveys. Can you tell uh, us like what incentives they have or what um, led them to do so? What led them to volunteer? Volunteer? Or uh, volunteer for initial surveys or was it the literature survey? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what drove these communities to want to do that, to reach out and uh, you mean high level waste disposal site selection process? Well, I mean, yes. I mean, not really, but like, so the two communities that actually volunteered for mm -hmm. the literature survey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what incentives drove them to volunteer? Incentive, not even volunteer. Volunteer? No, 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 I don't know. Uh, they are, mm, but I think the mayor of the municipalities uh, wanted to get some economic uh, 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 money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the government so, so. Uh, provides uh, subsidiary money mm. to the volunteers. But this is one reason. Uh, uh, I think uh, the mayor uh, wanted to uh, cooperate to uh, governmental project to uh, uh, apply for the uh, application uh, for the uh, literature survey, and then uh, it is a very important uh, issue for Japan. I think two municipality uh, mayors uh, had to had apply to uh, cooperate to this important issue to resolve this is important issue, I think. Yes, Henry, sir. Yeah, just a comment, uh, similar uh, situation in, in Sweden. Uh, Sweden. They have now selected the uh, Forsmark uh, nuclear power plant site for the final uh, disposal of uh, spent nuclear fuel. And there was actually also two municipalities who wanted those uh, waste management facilities uh, at their municipality because they know and they have experience with nuclear already there and they know that uh, <coughs> this is additional work, additional labor. For, uh, for many decades there will be people coming into the municipality, they can provide services, there, it creates jobs and economic value and that's, mm -hmm. that's all about mm -hmm. it. And so there needs to be always some uh, benefit for the, for the local community. Yes. I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a question also, one question. Um, so if um, um, you think now about Estonia, like a newcomer country for nuclear, and um, if you would um, plan out the waste management, do you have some specific recommendations for <laughs> Estonia, <laughs> like what especially to focus mm -hmm. or consider? Thank you. Oh, Japan's uh, uh, classification of... Uh, detective waste is like this uh, and uh, disposal concept is divided in some categories but uh, Estonia is a, uh, a compact country so I don't think there are as, um, three or four categories for disposal uh, I think disposal uh, 
facility type is um, only two needed, I think. Not so much uh, disposal facilities type, like uh, I think uh, shallow land uh, disposal facility for uh, short-lived radioactive waste, low level, and uh, for high-level waste uh, with long-lived. Mm. Two types is needed, I think. Okay. Are there any comments, questions? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you about this comprehensive presentation. Of course, this is a very important topic for Estonia also as we, we started start with the new program. Then two most important to topics, as we heard, is emergencies and, uh, and, uh, and uh, radioactive waste management. So I a little bit a little, uh, elaborate further with the previous question because most concern comes with the high activity waste, so used, used nuclear fuel. When we consider that um, Estonia will have a qu quite small nuclear program uh, with 1,000 megawatt, uh, maybe, something like that, then we will have quite small waste streams about uh, high activity waste. And uh, right now, available uh, options we have like four. One is uh, put it underground uh, without the recycling. The other option is like a Japanese option that we recycle, uh, have the even smaller quantities, and uh, then we finally dispose. Then we have lease. It's not really an option. And fuel leasing, it's, it's, uh, it's done only by Russia, I think. And then we have a regional approach that we have region, regional disposal facilities and uh, try to build one because uh, with a country with a small nuclear program, it's quite difficult to, to have, have a small quantities and uh, geological disposal. So considering those four options are available, what is, what is your feeling that uh, just because you are like experienced and, and you know, know all the things, uh, what, what will be right now when we have to like, make decision right now? Based on the knowledge that we have, that uh, SMR will not be using MOX fuel because there is no designs available for that. Mm. So what is the best option that we could choose? Sorry mm. for that difficult question. <laughs> Very difficult question, but uh, if we wanted to use uh, spent fuel as resources, um, uh, you would you'd ask to uh, France or other reprocessing uh, countries. And uh, direct disposal, uh, you would ask to uh, uh, Sweden or uh, Finland. Mm. So I think, mm, is it answered <laughs> to your question? <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Are you more? Oh, okay. This is the last, last one. <laughs> yes, thank you for your presentation. Uh, since you're already recycling your uh, high activity wastes, I had the questions, have you considered uh, also recovery of uh, minor actinides? Mm, one, more, one more, please. Uh, have you considered the uh, recovery of transuranium elements, minor actinides, uh, during recovery of uranium and plutonium from spent nuclear fuel? Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Not so uh, considered. I, I don't think considered in our company. Uh, for all of them are um, a considered as a, a high-level liquid waste. So, but a research uh, uh, organization um, has been conducting the uh, research. Uh, um, I think a conversion of. Um, irritation to change. Uh, I think I, I couldn't uh, explain where, so, but uh, some research uh, organizations have uh, been studying to exchange the uh, high actinide, uh, high level, uh, high radioactivity actinide into ad other uh, uh, less uh, toxic. 
isotopes, I think. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have no, uh, no time to the more question. If you have uh, any question, please contact the him after 5 p.m. Okay.